there is what I believe to be a growing issue with DJI 04 and specifically the antenna UFL connections getting ripped off. Now we started to see early reports of this when it released but I am getting more and more people contacting me and seeing more and more posts online that in a crash or even a little bit of rough handling one of the UFLs on the 04 Pro ear unit comes off. Now, in this video, I want to talk a bit about what I think the cause is. I'm then going to walk you through the process of trying to offer some additional strength and support on the UFLs on the 04 Pro ear unit. If you want to do a modification on yours, what we're actually going to do is get it under the microscope and we're going to re-wet the connectors and add more solder. But we're also going to do a little bit of a dive into what you can do if this has happened to you as well and really just discuss what this problem is all about. Now this is just one of a number of posts that I've seen around this issue. Nate has very kindly given me permission to talk about his image in this video here today. Nate also gave me permission to use his image in the thumbnail on this video as well. He has his own YouTube channel, so please do consider hopping over there and checking it out, giving him a subscribe. A massive thank you from me to you, Nate. And as I've said, please do check out the link to his channel in the description. And as you can see, he has lost his right hand UFL. Now, I have had several users reach out to me with this issue. I've seen several posts on social media. It does seem to be the right-hand one that is the most common one to come off, but I have seen reports of the left-hand one happening as well. It seems to be either a very gentle tug or even a mild crash is resulting in it getting ripped off. Now, if we take a look at his image in a bit more detail, you can see that the UFL has actually come off the pads completely and it's actually torn off the main pad for the signal that heads out up into the filter. The track is still there though, so it is repairable. And I do know Nate has repaired his, but he did tell me it certainly isn't for the fight hearted and it's not going to be for the average person, but we will talk about that a bit more later on. But what you can see is that the UFL does get ripped off the solder. Now I'm going to talk about what I think the cause on this is a lot more in a minute, but what's interesting when you look at this image is that the pad has actually come off the solder itself from the top and the reason for this is the way these are manufactured the solder is actually applied in paste the ufl is placed on the top and the board is heated and as a result of that the component is sort of floated into place and then when the solder dries it's held in place the issue is is that it isn't actually encapsulated in solder the ufl connection is simply sitting on top of the solder and as a result of this really quite soft lead free solder it offers very little mechanical strength. Now I wouldn't call this a design issue but what I would say is this is absolutely a weak point and if you look at this connector here there doesn't appear to be a lot of solder on this one either. We're actually going to get my ear unit out in a minute and we're going to take a look at mine and then we're going to actually show you how to reinforce these to offer some more mechanical strength. But what I will say is whilst it's not a design issue I do think there is more that DJI could be doing. These connectors are not glued and the way they are soldered certainly does need some improvement. Okay, so I've removed the lid off this VTX and as you can see, you've got that pad that is located on the top cover here. Now, this isn't really stopping these UFLs coming off. It's simply pressing against the top of them to stop them lifting up. What it's not giving is mechanical stress protection. Now, Obviously, there is a lot of things that you could do to try and prevent problems. You could try and glue the UFLs. You could try and do some of the soldering, which we're going to take a look at in a minute. Or you could offer some mechanical protection to the wiring to stop it coming off. What we'll do first is lift our UFLs off and then we'll take a closer look at them under the microscope so you can see exactly what I think the issue is. 
So here you can see the UFLs in a bit more detail. You've got your pads on either side of the UFL connection. You've then got your main signal pin that comes out the top up to this filter there for the one on the right. And then it's the same on the one on the left. We've got our pads on either side, then with our signal wire then coming out the top and going into the filter. Now, there are several things that you could do here to try and stop issues. What we're going to do today is resolder or refloat the UFL connectors because I think part of the problem here is caused by the type of soldering and that is that solder paste is used to put these connections on and then the connector is basically then floated on top of that. Now if we just zoom in and show you it in a bit more detail you'll see that the tags on either side are not in the solder they sit on top of the solder and as a result of that there is very little mechanical strength on the UFL and as a result it will actually pull off. It doesn't help that this is lead free solder so there's very little strength in that as well but I think we can definitely improve the mechanical strength of these connectors simply by re-wetting and adding more solder to then encapsulate the connections on either side rather than them just sit on top of the solder. Now, before we do this, I should just say any modifications that you make will affect the warranty of your ear unit. If you want to make sure you have the warranty, don't touch it and just make sure then you try and offer some strain relief onto the antenna cables themselves. You could also try to apply some glue. Some other VTXs do have glue. I've seen it on the Avatar GT, but my personal preference is to do this re-wetting of the solder around the connections. That way, that should offer some decent mechanical strength. Now, the soldering iron I'm going to use for this today is the new Quick TS11. Now, this is a soldering iron sort of designed for very small component repair rework soldering. It doesn't have many big tips. It comes with a small chisel tip as well as a couple of small conicals. We're going to use this very small conical tip here to do this today. What we're going to do isn't for everyone if you're not someone who feels they are competent with electronic repair with soldering i probably wouldn't advise you do this however if you do have a really small tip soldering iron and you're feeling up to it you shouldn't have too many problems so let's take a look at how it goes now unfortunately when i was recording this the audio didn't work and as a result you're going to get a bit of a voiceover so i have already tried to wet the connectors once with a slightly larger tip just to get a bit of heat into them. What I have found if doing this is that the pads on either side are extremely well grounded. As a result of that, it takes quite a bit of heat to get in there to get them to wet. I'm also doing this under the microscope screen rather than through the microscope that I would usually use. And as a result of that, I'm not quite getting the same view of doing the work that I normally would. And I do struggle at times to actually get the solder into the connector. Now here you can see that we are wetting the connector on either side, but it is drying very quickly. And this is because of the amount of ground plane around the connector. I did actually end up increasing the amount of heat just to try and help get that into the board and as a result of that I was able to wet that side without too many problems. We then move over to this side here and start the same process again. Try and get as much heat into the pad as I can and then pop the solder in to try and get it to reflow. Reflow not only around the connector but on top of it as well carefully running the soldering iron up and down and the idea is to just put plenty of solder on the ufl so there is lots of mechanical strength and get away from that ufl sitting on top of the solder and instead those pads on either side be encapsulated by the solder offering additional strength now, if you're going to do this, as I've said, you do need to make sure that you are competent with the soldering iron. Take it slow, take it easy. Be careful with the UFL connection itself. They're made of like plasticky foam and they will melt if you get too close to them. Again, you can see it's quite hard to get the heat into the board to be able to do this. I do go back and forth again a few times on these whilst wetting them just to make sure that the solder does flow. The, that little pause I did was to go and turn the soldering iron temperature up 
and again try and get a bit more heat into the board to allow it to flow a bit more solder as well that way then we're getting plenty around each connector now do be careful of this uh, ribbon cable you do not want to melt this with your iron it would be very easy to actually make a mistake and do that you will see in a minute that i do actually get a little bit of solder on that metal shielding at the side doesn't matter doesn't cause any problems but you will see that there's a little bit there again just trying to get the heat into the pad to allow it to flow i think we have to put a bit of time in and then tidy them all up and then once that's done we will clean the board up we get a bit of isopropyl alcohol on it and then i will show you what it looks like once it's done so here is the result after finishing up i've gone back and forth a few times we've cleaned the board with some isopropyl alcohol and now you can see the solder on the pads on either side this is is a lot better than how it comes from the factory it will offer just a dramatic more amount of strength on the connector this is by far the best way to improve this you don't need to add any solder to the little pads that go out to the signal side you don't need to do that you can see that one at the top there i didn't touch overall though you can see that it just should offer a lot more strength in average use but again as i have said already this isn't necessarily for everyone and it really isn't something you should have to do dji really do need to improve this you've got the signal wires that you could get to if you were damaging it and we'll talk about that a bit more in a minute but dji just need to put a lot more solder on than they are currently because people should really not be having issues like this now just to show you down there as well you can see on either side it all looks pretty good there was a solder ball on the edge there and there's a little bit on the ring of the uh, ufl that i got on by mistake but don't worry that won't cause me any issues now if you have damaged yours and you want to repair it there are options available to you everything i've seen so far looks like it leaves the ground pads on either side but it does usually rip off the signal wire if we pop onto my fpv wiki and we go into dji i do have all of the images uploaded on here for the 04 pro and the standard 04 ear unit and if we go down here somewhere we should start to see some of the images in a bit more detail there we go so for instance on the pro if we go on this one this gives us a nice look at the ufl setup you can see the signal what pin for this one heads off to that little pin there on that filter so if it does lift the pad you should be able to scrape that back there and be able to get onto it this one is the same you can see the pad though goes across the on the uh track and then the pad there you should be able to again recover this one i haven't seen any where it's ripped the ground's off the ground should absolutely be fine it's just this signal one here now when it comes to the light we didn't look at the light under the microscope but if we get in and just have a closer look on my one everything is pretty much the same although it's a bit more complicated on the light because it is right next to all of this gunk here you're probably going to need to pick it off but again there should be a track here that heads off into this shield there's a bit of a gap in the shield around there so again if it does rip the ufl you do want to be able to solder on to whatever track is left and you should be able to do that with regards to adding some more mechanical strength to this one the same process stands you want to flow the solder just down down by there you can't see the other pad on this because it's under the glue so you might want to pick off this glue and get in a little bit closer but both of them should be repairable what's nice is this just doesn't vanish into the can and make life difficult to repair a lot of people though who have damaged theirs are just sending them back to dji but there is a repair option available to you if you did want to do it yourself now i actually think this is quite a big problem and the number one problem that dji have with 04 today 
There are a lot of issues with 04 right now. Nothing dramatic in the sense of it's not usable or stuff like that. There are absolutely weird firmware quirks, but all of them can be fixed easily. The problem with this kind of issue is its reliability and it isn't something DJI can send a firmware update out on your ear unit to resolve. Anyone who's bought it today will have an ear unit that has this potential weak point, this potential sort of... I, I don't want to call it a design issue because it's not, but it is absolutely a weakness and it is a more of a weakness than we'd seen on the previous ear unit. DJI could improve manufacturing at the factory and they absolutely need to. It's my opinion. They need to get on top of this. They don't need to change the design. They need to do something around those UFLs, glue them from the factory, improve the soldering to ensure new ones don't have this problem. For existing users though, it leaves you in a bit of an issue because if yours is susceptible, all you can really do is add stress relief on the UFLs to make sure that there's nothing that can pull on them even in the event of a crash. Or you can go down the road that I have done today and wet them and solder them and that should offer a much better solution. In the end, it is a bit of a shame that there are these little quirks with 04, but it's a new product. There are always things like this that happen. Hopefully DJ will take the feedback on board and improve the reliability on this in the future. And that way this becomes an issue with early adopters at least. And if DJ do replace the ear units under warranty that suffer from this, at least no one is out of pocket. I can't quite say if anyone has had this without having a crash, it's hard to say, but everything I've seen on this design and the amount of solder on it really does make me think they have left a weak point here and I actually think it wouldn't take a lot to rip one of these off just with a bit of rough handling. Now I hope you found this video interesting please do let me know what you think below if you've had this let me know below as well if you'd like to support the channel to allow me to keep making content like this in the future please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons we would not be able to keep making content on this channel without your support and if you'd like to support us to make content in the future please check it out overall that's pretty much it from me on this one. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.